The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 6, verses 41 to 51. The Jews were complaining to each other about Jesus, because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Surely this is Jesus, son of Joseph, they said. We know his father and mother. How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus said in reply, Stop complaining to each other. No one can come to me unless he is drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, They will all be taught by God, and to hear the teaching of the Father, and learn from it, is to come to me. Not that anybody has seen the Father except the one who comes from God. He has seen the Father. I tell you most solemnly, everybody who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the desert and they are dead. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that a man may eat it and not die. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, in a small village nestled in the mountains, there lived an elderly woman named Jokina. Every morning, regardless of weather or season, Jokina would walk to the village church before sunrise. She would sit quietly in the front pew, a well-worn Bible in her hands, and softly read the scriptures. One bitterly cold winter morning, a young man passing by noticed Jokina through the frosted windows of the church. Curious, he entered and found her deeply engrossed in her reading. After she finished, he approached her and asked, Jokina, why do you come here every day, especially in such harsh weather? Jokina smiled warmly and replied, Young man, this is where I find my bread for the day. Puzzled, the young man looked around the empty church and said, But I do not see any bread here. Jokina gently tapped her Bible and said, This is the bread I speak of, the word of God. Just as our bodies need daily bread to live, our souls need the Word of God to nourish and sustain us. 
not just for this life, but for eternal life. Her simple yet profound explanation left a lasting impression on the young man. From that day on, he too began to visit the church regularly, seeing the same nourishment that Jokina found in the scriptures. My dear brothers and sisters, today's liturgy highlights the importance of the Word of God in our lives. It tells us that the Word of God becomes the bread of eternal life. The first reading from the first book of Kings tells us that God provided miraculous food through the prophet Elijah. The little background to the story will help us to know God's bountiful love for his beloved prophet. Prophet Elijah had challenged the prophets of Baal. Thus, he had challenged Queen Jezebel, the wife of King Ahaz, who was a pagan. She had influenced people to worship Baal, the pagan god. As a result, the people suffered from a drought for more than three and a half years. The prophet proved the falsehood of pagan gods. God consumed the victim offered by prophet Elijah, but the pagan prophets failed in it. Elijah took the occasion to slaughter more than 400 prophets of Baal. The queen kindled with anger sought to kill the prophet. The disciples who treasured all that Jesus taught them went about proclaiming it to all nations. The word of God became the food for their journey of life. The proclamation of the word brought early Christians together St. John the Evangelist says in his prologue, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, that is Jesus Christ. As cited in John chapter 1, verse 14, the author of Hebrews saw Christ as the fulfillment of God's self-communication to humans as in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Hence, the Second Vatican Council states, We come to the liturgy of the Word, not just to hear words about Jesus, but to open ourselves to the real presence of Christ who speaks to us. If the Word is the bread of eternal life, then we need to thank God for the gift of the Bible. The Word of God helps us in so many ways. It gives us directions for our lives. It provides wisdom for our journey. It comforts us and gives us hope to rise above the difficulties. It reveals God's bountiful love for us. The Word of God also becomes a spiritual nourishment. Therefore, many holy men and women spend their time with the Word of God. They had realized it was important. They made it their bread to eternal life. St. Teresa had a deep devotion to the scriptures, especially the Gospels. She often meditated on the words of Jesus and sought to live them out in her daily life. Her little way 
of spiritual childhood was inspired by her reading of scripture where she found a call to simplicity humility and trust in god my dear brothers and sisters let us pray during this mass that we may make the word of god our daily bread and learn to live by it because it is the word that will give us eternal life amen